I want to get online. I need a computer. I need a Sinologic 60. Sogo 7 data gloves. A GPL stealth mod. One Burdine Intelligent Translator. A Thompson iPhone. I want room service! I want the club sandwich. I want the cold Mexican beer. I want a $10,000 a night hunter. Hold, sinners! A. B. N. It's headphones nail! What's up guys, Headphones Neil here, back with another film review, and in this case is going to be the old film Johnny Mnemonic, starring Keanu Reeves. So, recently I was thinking about films from the past that take place in the future, so in this case it's a 1995 film that takes place in 2021. And so I heard, I had heard a lot of bad things about the film, how it had been adapted from a William Gibson novel, or short story maybe and that it wasn't a really good represent representation of the novel and overall the film was generally just a bad film. Um, I think I had seen it in the past few years and thought it was okay but since we're now in 2021 I thought I would rewatch it and see how it holds up in general. So overall I thought that the film had a good premise to it and a good idea. The idea that um, as a means of transferring um, content um, from one place to another via a courier in their mem in their brain, and have that courier ha um, have to use an implant, remove um, long term memory, and that sort of stuff, and then use a security key in the form of images, um, so that the courier doesn't know the information and um, the information is quote secure from end to end. So all of that kind of worked and that kind of re reminded me of the encryption schemes that we kind of hear about from the um, days of like the Roman Empire and medieval times and things like that where um, people would encrypt um, their information and letters by putting them in codexes, think of, thinking along the lines of um, Leonardo da Vinci or um, putting um, there's uh, a ring signet on it and um, closing the letter with a um, can or uh, uh, some sort of stamp or something like that so or maybe setting up some sort of other encryption scheme so the film reminded me a lot of that kind of premise but with a more modern take on it um, the thing that kind of falls apart for me is the intricacies and random elements of the film that are presented throughout so granted the film takes place about 27 years into the future which at the time might have seemed like a long time but it also uses and references things that um a no longer exist b don't really make sense even in the time of the thing but granted like the things like the internet were kind of new but it all in all doesn't really i don't know it just seems kind of strange now is that not having some of those technologies being used some technology still kind of being used and things like that so um to start it off when we start off the film with um johnny taking um possession of the data that he needs to transfer from point a to point b he uses something called a disk doubler software so um i guess he has about 80 gigs of storage in his brain which now seems kind of seems pretty low um he uses a disk doubler software to potentially get up to 160 gigabytes of storage so the main problem here is that i don't really remember disk doubler software being that good at doubling software granted you can use a zip um you can zip the files or compress the files and gain you know maybe 10 percent 25 percent storage you can because you're compressing it but never to the point where you can exactly double your data and then on top of that they take it a a, a lot further and they compress or they put four 320 gigs of storage into his brain so four times that amount so they basically doubled the doubler so it's kind of like trying to run a disk love doubling software on the doubling program that you already did so that to me just 
generally seemed like it didn't work, mostly because for the main thing was that disc doubling software never really worked that good to begin with. And even using um, off the shelf software like you know WinZip or WinRAR to compress your files, it never really was that good to be able to do that. You needed to have that storage, whether a bigger hard drive, delete files and things like that. And then on top of that, when you look into the present day, we have storage devices that are considerably larger than that. So saying that your brain can hold less than what um, the Johnny Mnemonic future predicted is seems kind of strange. So for example, the phone I'm using right now has 256 gigs of, gigs of storage, and I'm not going to magically be able to double that and get 512 gigs of storage. And then you have um, storage drives of, or hard drives at one terabyte and larger, uh, flash drives at um, 512 gigs to one terabyte. So overall, basically the Johnny Mnemonic future could have been solved just as easily with a flash drive. Um, with potential encryption software or even if they did in the form of an implant where you put a USB drive in the, to a courier's head and stick the flash drive into it and it can only be um, ejected or unloaded or removed from his brain by using the code that would have been a better future or better uh, resolution in this case. Um, the next up thing is that when we do, it's in the same scene, but this is in the next scene when we have um, Keanu Reeves doing the data transfer, we get the initial look at what would eventually be a really cool idea in the Matrix, and that's the form of the actual data transfer So and connecting to the internet. So he uses what looks like an auxiliary cable to the back of his head to um, download the data, and later he uses that to um, connect to the internet. Um, by plugging into the back of his head and then using a bunch of different um, hardware that you heard at the stinger at the top of the show with the um, Thompson iPhone, the Cyber, or whatever that other hardware was that I can't never really remember all the names to, but basically the Matrix took this idea and made it a really cool version where you can plug into the Matrix, aka the internet or um, a um, network and get access to all of this information. So I actually thought that this idea was pretty good in that um, in order to handle this sort of massive um, data transfer from the internet or your local disk into your brain, you need to um, plug it in, plug in or jack in directly to your head, and that's what the Matrix also did really well. Is that in order to handle the 3D life-like um, processing power that's needed, you need to literally jack in. It's not something that can handle well over Wi-Fi or mobile network or anything like that. You have to literally jack in to access it. So. While the auxiliary cable now doesn't seem as cool as what they did in the Matrix, it was actually something that I think they did pretty well and um, I thought that um, they presented well in all the various situations when it was with just a data transfer, the internet jacking in for um, Keanu Reeves to, act, to get in touch with his hacker buddies, and then at the end when he's in the chair um, hacking into his own brain. Um, the, the next thing that I kind of thought didn't work in the film was the use of fax machines to transfer data. So it was kind of strange. It's kind of strange now, and it's one of those scenes that's 50 50 because we're still using fax machines. So it's not like they went, the film went out of its way to predict that we would still be using fax machines. But the idea that we're going to use fax machines to um, transfer data from. Uh, or transfer a security code from one place to another and then um, you have to send your courier to the um, another, one place to another to actually transfer the data it doesn't quite work as one would imagine so um, it's one of those things where it kind of makes sense to the point where if you um, don't use uh, or if you translate fax machine, translate from uh, fax machines over to something like um, sending an encryption key or having uh, things like an authenticator service or text message um, two-factor authentication, 
the idea makes a little bit of sense because it's the original version of two-factor authentication but the idea that you would do it over a fax machine makes it more insecure um, mostly because you can send that fax or the, what they did in the film aside you could send the information um, over fax but anybody could get it especially if they were um, taking that time to anticipate the data and then um, they could take it expect the courier like essentially if um, in the film Takashi had spent the time to get the code or wait for the code to come through get the code and then wait for Johnny to show up it would have made his job infinitely easier so um, the idea that this is a early form of two-factor authentication is a good idea but how they did it was not so I'm kind of glad that we're not using fax machines as two factor or as a basis for two factor two factor authentication and then what they did later was kind of cool an idea that um, Keanu Reeves tried to access the fax machine buffer to um, obtain one of the three images which was kind of strange in that it presumed that fax machines would use the internet to transmit the data rather than the phone line which is what they were doing so it was kind of strange that um, the that he was able to access a fax machine buffer because I don't remember that fax machines hold their buffer for that long, especially if you have another fax come in. So it's one of those things that, okay, I assume that there, there were no other faxes sent using that phone number, but then if it was accessing the internet, it would presume that the data would be stored somewhere on the internet. So it... In the form of a fax machine buffer, that kind of did not work, but it kind of does make sense in the form that, okay, if you're um, storing something on a hard drive and you accidentally delete it, it um, kind of used that idea of certain programs that was, that was like an undelete program where if you accidentally deleted something, it could potentially be still stored in the... Um, very, various partitions or sectors of the hard drive as data because it hasn't quite cleared out of that hard drive space yet and hasn't not been overwritten. So assuming that data had not been overwritten, you could still get access to some of that data and potentially extract it and quote, undelete it. So that idea was kind of okay. It just was not presented well. So it's kind of like, um, here's a cool idea. This is some um, hot new technology so let's use it and um, try and fit it into the film but now when you look back on it, it doesn't quite fit as well and then the other thing that was a quite kind of quick scene and quick cut in the film was idea of still using zip disk software so granted zip disk didn't last as long as um, probably the, the developers of that technology wanted it to but it kind of was a precursor to the idea that it, that would eventually become zip di or sorry uh, flash drives, not zip disks, because um, basically zip disks were a progression of the pri of the technology prior to it. So you have floppy drives and um, things like that, and then you have CDs and mini CD, mini CDs and DVDs and things like that. So zip disks were just another form of that. So since that was the um, latest and greatest technology of the time it, it was one of those things that they decided to use but if they it was one of those things where I guess they granted I don't want to say that they could have predicted flash drives so for me while it was a kind of silly idea to use zip disk it wasn't a bad idea to use it because they were using the latest and greatest technology to transfer files and it was the best option to use so for me, uh, this kind of settles it at 50-50. Um, but speaking of forward-looking technology, the thing that actually did kind of work in the film was the airport body scanner. So when Johnny's heading to Newark, or Keanu Reeves is heading to um, Newark, he gets a full body scan that detects his neural seepage and that he's overloaded and all of that. And um, it basically gives him a full body diagnosis but full body diagnosis at the airport before he goes through and it's one of those things that kind of happens now um because of a bad situation or a bad event that happened but we now do have body scanners at the airport that do um um elicit body search checks so 
quite kind granted kind of not quite as deep as um futuristic and detailed as a johnny mnemonic version is but is kind of along those lines that it can scan your body for things that shouldn't be there so granted at some point maybe we will get to that point where we can do a full body scan and say and check for you know um blood clot issues or diabetes or um, you potentially might have cancer or any uh, random things like that which would be a very pretty cool idea to um, have that kind of scanner but overall the Johnny Mnemonic body scanner at the airport was an idea that worked um, as far as in movie music goes in general the soundtrack wasn't anything memorable but the thing that did stand out to me was when johnny was at um ralphie's club we had what sounded like lo-fi beats so if you stream music or you search on youtube you'll hear you'll, you'll see a lot of different um videos out there for things that for what's called a uh, lo-fi beat so it's basically music that you can relax to chill to work to and things like that so when you're when you listen to that and you see here it in um the johnny mnemonic nightclub it is one of those things that kind of just works and sounds um pretty um good and was something that i actually liked in the film so um it kind of while it wasn't something that they necessarily predicted or um, foretold into the future, it was something that worked because it's something that's came to pass um, as far as music that people might still be listening to. So um, I want to give them points for that just because it kind of worked. It was a pretty quiet scene. It was a kind of club that Ralphie, that would kind of work for Ralphie. So um, in listening to it, I will give points for that um and then of course they turn around and turn things around again and um we see that or we have a couple of scenes where we have one of the bad guys one of the henchmen for ralphie using a laser whip which was kind of weird because he was the only one that had it but then it was a pretty cool piece of technology pretty cool piece of technology that um can cut through just about anything so um, it cut through, uh, it can cut through human flesh, doors, metal, locks, um, tables, whatever you want. So it was basically like the lightsaber of the film. But then if this is a piece of technology that's available, why isn't it mass produced? Why does this one henchman, um, why is the, so only the one henchman who has it? How does he get trained in using it? So they kind of presented an idea that didn't really get fleshed out so it was kind of like why does he even have it to begin with begin with or how does it even come about so i was kind of hoping that there would be a scene maybe when um johnny's parsing through the pharmacom um data dump in his brain that he comes across a project called Pro project laser whip or something like that where they show the idea behind it or he extracts it out to the dolphin or to ice tea and they're reviewing the idea behind it so it could have been explained at any point in the film but they kind of didn't explain it at all as to wh uh, why this guy had it how did he get it what's going on with it so it's kind of like the film presented a lot of ideas and technology um outside of the um brain storage courier stuff and then didn't really spend the time to explain any of it um and then, of course, go, moving on into the later part of the film and the final climax as far as getting to the low-tech headquarters and hacking into the brain, when we get to the scene where um, Keanu Reeves wants room service and he um, is asking for the iPhone and all that to get online, how do they stumble into a room or come for you to, or I guess they explained it kind of, but it was kind of one of those things where how did they stumble into a sewer warehouse full of every all the technology that he needs to get online with an uh, connection with an internet connection and all that and i guess they when we have the bad guys trying to track them down i guess he was in a computer lab so it kind of felt very lucky and convenient that they stumbled into all of the stuff that had the room that had all the stuff that um keanu reeves needed to get online so i don't know it just felt kind of weird so i 
it felt like one of those things where if they had at least presented it as they were walking through a mall that had a computer lab then it kind of would have worked for me but the scene just wasn't presented well with the overall dramatic um, acting that Keanu Reeves was presenting um, and then next up or finally um, when we have um, Ice-T giving his final speech to the world to broadcast that they're that they found the cure for the Black Shakes NAS and he tells everybody to get their VCRs ready that was probably the one thing that stood out as far as pulling the film out of its time because everything else kind of would have worked in a futuristic thing we have the courier with the brain in his head we have the auxiliary port to the back of the head we have fax machines and all that but then he says um, uh, basically he tells everyone to get your VCRs ready to record this and um, then we, and then we have um, Keanu Reeves trying to get into that fax buffer I was, I've been talking about but if we're in a future where we're still using VCRs is that really the most um, efficient way to get your data um, to get your message across and saved. So the only explanation that I could think of was because this is coming from the low-tech world headquarters that they're thinking of the most low-tech means of, of um, saving messages and I guess every, uh, VCRs are still being mass-produced so granted you can still go um, out to um, Amazon or whatever maybe eBay or something like that to buy a VCR but um, essentially, at this, I imagine at this point in time that in the future, uh, most data has been transferred off of VCR or video cassette, VHS tapes and transferred into some sort of digital format, whether it's DVD, Blu-ray, uh, MP4 file, a some sort of digital file, or posted on some streaming service, whether it's Amazon, um, iTunes, or YouTube, or whatever. But um, if you're looking for some offline format to save some data to, wouldn't you want to... So, I guess if you're watching um, some sort of television broadcast, I'm hoping that they have something better than um, VCRs to record to, notably something like a DVD recorder or something like that. That would be easier to transfer, a, a transfer around and... Uh, move around just because it's less bulky it's easier to record to it's easier to convert into another format so if they want to take that information and dump it onto the internet it's a lot easier than using a um, video cassette and then the data um, degradation is a lot less just because when you transfer it from VHS to some sort of digital format you have to worry about hissing in the audio um, the file quality or the image quality is not as good and things like that so the VCR thing basically took me out of the film to the point where no no one's really using um, VCRs anymore unless you're a person who has a lot of old VHS tapes and you want to still use or watch those videos but um, over all the times that over all these years where we've had the rise of um, Blu-ray and DVD and sorry DVD and then Blu-ray and then now digital media there's enough conversion going on to the point where most VHS I want to say has been converted into some sort of digital format and recording in some sort of digital format is a lot easier to do than it was before um, so and, if, and so of the two old technologies that were used VCRs are not really used as much as they were that they're used to fax machines are still used because some it's kind of still secure in some settings, I guess, to transfer the data, but even that's on the d going um, lower and, or that kind of usage is still going lower and lower and there's very specific use cases for fax machines, but um, it's getting to be to the point where it's a lot more of a hassle and nuisance than it is uh, a benefit and uh, technology to be used. So overall if I was to grade the film um, as far as entertainment value I'd probably give it about a 80 to 85 percent it was a decent film um, the, aside from the idea that we're that we could still be using VCRs and fax machines in the future the main scene that kind of took me out of everything after all of that was the whole dolphin scene at the end with Jones um, so that was kind of strange and weird. I not 
if I was watching it for the first time, it wasn't something that I was expecting. Um, the explanation that they gave was pretty good. I'm glad that they didn't that they didn't have um, Jones talking like a human, which would have been worse. Um, I'm glad that they had him plugged in. They explain ex- explained that he was experimented on by the Navy, so he talks through the internet and through televisions and through technology. So it was kind of strange and overall something that I generally uh, it was presented well it was probably one of the best presented things in the movie so overall it kind of just worked um the whole johnny mnemonic courier thing was kind of is it kind of shows this age that okay it's a cool future and it kind of works um they uh, had a um, basic idea of two-factor authentication with the fax machine of the images um transferring data via the aux cube to connect to the internet to him kind of works so I was kind of wondering now, and we're kind of wondering now why they didn't use some sort of um, USB transfer technology or something like that. Um, so things like that, uh, while not completely hashed out, were good. I definitely didn't like the whole VCR thing. The whole fax machine buffer was kind of strange. If they had left it as, um, uh, well, I don't know. It's it, the whole fax machine buffer to the internet was okay, I guess, because if you're, they kind of introduced the idea of intercept, intercepting inter- internet connection and then getting that bu- that information. So the buffer of the idea was, it, it, it kind of expl- it was kind of a plot device to progress the film along. That that where else would they get this um, data from? But in general, it was okay. Um, the whole Black Shakes NAS t- for technological overload was pretty decent and or pretty decent of an idea, mostly for like from my perspective. Um, and it's a simple comparison to make, but if you if you wear um, the blue light filter gla- um, glasses when you're wa- using a computer screen, it's one of those things where it prevents wear and tear and fatigue on your eyes and mental fatigue. So it's one of those things where the Black Shakes or NAS takes that a whole few steps further to say that all this technological information overload causes a neurological disease. So that idea was uh, pretty well um, presented to that, uh, presented well enough to that point where too much technology and too much information overload will eventually cause our neurological pathways to break down so we do need to unplug and unwind and things like that the disc doubling thing was of course pretty silly and i didn't like that so taking points away from that but my favorite part of the film that they didn't expand well enough and i kind of wanted i definitely wanted more of was the whole street preacher concept presented by Dolph Lundgren or played by Dolph Lundgren so in the second half of the film when the main Yakuza bad guy is had enough of his henchmen failing he hires this guy who portrays Jesus who portrays a preacher um, goes by the street name of street preacher by the low techs and those kinds of guys um, he's basically a cyborg because he's had a lot of implants and doesn't have any more human elements to him and he basically is um, an assassin, a mercenary for hire, and sort of. Um, he's, basically, that's kind of the character he's portraying, but in the form of a cyborg. So he goes after um, Keanu Reeves to get his head. And overall, I liked um, all the stuff that came, that he said and the way he see, said it. So, like in his initial conversation with um, the Yakuza box, um, I think Shenzi was. Sh- Shenzo, Shenzhen, Shenzi, something like that. Um, I think Shenzhen was a guy from Star Trek, but um, basically, when Dolph Lundgren is saying, Would you like someone brought to Jesus? The way he pronounced it was pretty cool. Um, I think it might have been his accent, but I just like the way he said that when he says things like Jesus, Jesus time. And then um, my favorite line that he saw or they heard in the singer was when he's um, when. Um, Keanu Reeves, Dina Meyer, and the doctor guy are trying to escape, and Dolph Lundgren steps out in the middle of the street and yells, Halt, sinners! That was probably my, my um, second favorite, along, except for his initial lines with um, the Yakuza boss. But overall, I kind of wanted more of his um, origin, not necessarily his origin story. They probably could have done something along the lines of... Uh, 
um, uh, montage where they show the Yakuza um, <clears throat> building him as far as um, cr putting in all the implants along the lines of well, oh, maybe even br bringing up the technology behind um, Jones a little bit more. So keep the reveal of Jones um, until the end and that all was fine. But if they had created a um, idea of creating um, the street preacher from the same technology as Jones so he's able to go out he has all um, so the strength of a cyborg he's able to plug into the internet and find people and access all that data like Jones um, and all of that and then still be a street preacher that would have all been a pretty cool origin story and then um, he while he's along the lines of a still the street preacher he's um, maybe trying to cure people of the black shakes um by being a preacher i was kind of it would have been interesting to see if they had um, expanded on his character a little bit more so at some oh, he's still that merc or because he's he used to be a mercenary but he's now a preacher and he's tr trying to help people get cured of the black shakes kind of like along the lines of keanu reeves meditating when he ha and doing tai chi i guess when he's after the data download and to keep his mind sane um, we have Dolph Lundgren um, being the preacher to help keep people calm of the, of the black shakes to help try and cure him, cure them through religion. Um, and because he used to be a mercenary, and the uh, Yakuza want him to take on um, Keanu Reeves, he gets the implants done, or he activates the implants that he already had, and. Um, goes after Keanu Reeves so all of the second half of the film stays the same but kind of have an origin story as a counter to what's going on with the Yakuza and more basically have more world building um, outside of just a focus on uh, what Johnny Mnemonic is doing and then what the Yakuza are doing so it kind of felt like they could have and they could at the at about an hour and a half or so the film was relatively tight and short but by adding some of these extra um, um, exposition options and character development they could have made the film a lot better and felt a little bit less silly by putting everything into the second half of the film and by the time we get to Jones it would have been less of a surprised to see Jones it would have been like okay yeah that makes sense and when they go to explain um the street preacher to or when low or when um IC goes to explain um the concept behind the street preacher and as it when he gets all burned at low tech headquarters um he could have explained that yeah the, that technology is the same technology that the army was experimenting on with Jones and this is kind of a aftermarket or black market version of that so all in all a decent film a lot could have been done better the technology could have been foretold could have been predicted or presented a little bit better if they had not used uh, fax machines or, or sorry not fax the fax machine part was okay I'm gonna leave that because Granted, if you encrypt the data in the courier's head and then transmit the images, that's an early version of two-factor authentication. So I'm okay with the whole fax machine thing in this case. But if they had not brought up um, brought up VCRs, if they had, if um, I see it just said, get your recorders ready, and you you'll want to get this. This is stuff that Pharmacom didn't want you to use. That would have gone over a lot better. Um, with auxiliary port to Keanu Reeves' head, if that was okay, it worked because they did a because they, were, they presented it well in um, The Matrix, so it's kind of, a lot of the stuff in this film, as far as Johnny Mnemonic goes, was a matter of presentation, so it felt like they were trying to merge high-tech and low-tech a lot, but it was a very uneven um, presentation, so it was one of those things that was not presented as well as it could have been. Um, so if you want to see a better version of this film, it kind of works better in the form of The Matrix because Keanu Reeves is still that courier and basically they changed the idea of the courier to the one who's going to bring balance to that mathematical equation of The Matrix. Um, you have um, the agents in The Matrix are basically the uh, better version of the Yakuza from Johnny Mnemonic. Um, you have the bodyguard in the form of Dina Myers from Johnny Mnemonic being um, 
Trinity and Morpheus and the rest of the crew of the Nebuchadnezzar. Um, and you have all the various other characters and all that, but I guess Dina Meyer is translated into Trinity as the bodyguard because Trinity is always there to back up Neo. And then um, Ice-T, um, as far as his character, as far as his knowledge and experience and history and all of that becomes Morpheus. Um, so, granted, so basically if you watch Johnny Mnemonic and then you watch The Matrix, The Matrix is basically the better more fleshed out version of what we see in Johnny Mnemonic and they have a good um, merging of the technologies between high tech and low tech because you have the matrix that requires all this data and processing power and computers and AI and um, 3D model building and all of that sort of stuff and then you have the low tech version where we have humans living beneath the earth because they still need warmth to sustain life. Um, they have to hack into the matrix using old ships from before um, humanity and civilization failed and went downhill. So um, all that sort of stuff. Basically Johnny Mnemonic did what it could do at the time with the technology that they had. But um, when you compare it to the Matrix and films that you see now, it doesn't work in my opinion just because they didn't take it too far and they tried to merge too much of whatever was the hot technology of the time to stuff that was existing at the time and assuming that it would still be used and in existence 20 years later or whether 20 years or you know 200 years it didn't feel like they took enough they, were, they felt like they were borrowing too much of other elements to make the film uh, work and uh, make it realistic enough to the point where um, it made any sense. So I can kind of see why the film didn't really do as well. So as far as giving it a final grade, I'd probably give it that fi a final grade of 80%. Some stuff was good. A lot of stuff was not as good. Um, there wasn't enough development and presentation of why various technology was still being used. They didn't really present Pharmacom enough as a bad idea except for the lady who said at the end that her, she uploaded her consciousness into the Pharmacom service, which was a total random bit of information that wasn't explained either, which again was another concept that we see in the Matrix as far as having human brains tied into this computer mainframe. So things like that. So the, basically, um, Johnny Mnemonic is at its core an alpha version of what we see in the Matrix. So. Um, if you want to watch the better film, watch, definitely watch The Matrix. And by scoring standards, it is, of course, uh, very good. I think Johnny Mnemonic was getting a score in the, like the tens and twenty percent. So definitely, and maybe even, and that was critics. For as far as audience goes, I want to say it was probably in the thirty somewhere. If I and I didn't really ch check or pay that much attention to it, but it wasn't that good of a. I mean, it was an okay movie. It was entertaining enough the jo uh, Johnny Mnemonic flip out scene with the room service was okay they didn't really resolve his childhood and um, like he got a good memory but they didn't really um, explain if he got that back of, or if Jones was able to restore his, all of his memories or just the one memory from his birthday I guess so um, things like that so the film tried to stick too tightly to a linear story and not explain anything and I think that's also where it kind of falls apart so if they were to remake the film which I don't know if they really should or shouldn't but if they were to remake the film I hope that they don't include um, the VCRs but I don't mind the whole idea that they that in some point in the future with these couriers and the internet and privacy secure and customers and all that are being in the hands of big corporations that you have to plug in not necessarily by an auxiliary port but with a usb cable or micro usb or something like that to have the a faster file data transfer or just keep it generic where you plug in a cable into your head don't tell us if it's an auxiliary port uh, USB C micro USB or anything like that just plug it in um, as far as transmitting the codes um, I don't want to say that you have that would they use a f um, fax machine because that would of course assume that you have a working telephone line and the telephone lines in the future are still being used but if 
they leave it kind of generic and don't show us and say um, if they use a computer that just says connecting, you know, kind of like the hey, America Online connection screens where you have to, di rather than dial a connection, you can still use numbers because that's one of those things that could still work in the future. You have a string of digits, whether it's in the form of an ICQ code, phone number, um, username, IP address, or something along those lines. Any one of those work ideas in my head would work. But you just say connecting. You don't say how you're connecting. Don't have a dial-up modem sounds. That's something that no one's heard in a long time unless you still use a fax machine. So you have a data connection that's always active. So just assume that it's always active and you don't have a sound or an outgoing or incoming sound to let us know that there's a connection. Have that visual representation and use it in the form of two-factor authentication. So once the connection is made, you transmit that data. So anyone can have those pictures but if they don't mean anything to you or send it in the form of and I know this is probably going to get me some hate but have it in the form of a captcha where you send you have three images that are pre-selected but you send a grid of six images so um, rather so that way if anyone gets that grid of um, images no, um, no one will know but the end user to um, pick those three images they can be in any order so when the courier gets there the data is unlocked by picking the three correct images in any order. So overall the whole idea of, and then if they're going to include the dolphin, which I'm still on the fence about, you need to include a counterpoint to that in my opinion. Or for me, what would work is in the form of the street preacher being set up on the black market to get all his upgrades, whether it's by his choice or not. Along the lines of like a general grievous where it wasn't his choice, but he welcomes the upgrades. Um, so in the form of the street preacher, he can kind of forget most of his mercenary memories and why he did the, got the upgrades, but he gets the upgrades. He becomes a priest a preacher, so he go takes on that whole persona but um, anyone with the um, key can activate him along the lines of the Winter Soldier which was presented really well as far as reprogramming someone's mind and keep the rest of that whole um, thing with the Street Preacher about the same. So Johnny Mnemonic could I guess technically be done as a post-apocalyptic post future in like let's say the year 3000 or something or we're in 2021 now so in the year 2520 or something when society is finally um, devolved into mega corporations like Judge Dredd um, and then you have these low techs who have kept technology certain technologies going in order to hack into the mind and because there's very few people who know about how all of that stuff works so think of it along the lines of how many people who are not in the tech industry um, know about uh, using Linux or Windows on the command line who know how to use things like MS-DOS or things like that who know how to program and code and things like that so outside of the big um, um, conglomerates and big manufacturers how many people um, know about things like that let's say in the consumer or in the private space or things like that so along the lines of that where you have the low techs who have their hackers or things, people like that to um, bring it all together. So I guess along the lines of um, merging the Matrix with um, hackers, with Judge Dredd, I guess. So basically bringing in a lot of these various elements and keeping technology generic and not really bringing up any particular set of technology so the user or the um, whoever's watching the film can watch the film and take a look at it as if uh, and basically fill in the information with whatever technology they want so you can say oh I wonder how he's getting that data into his brain and you can say well right now USB-C would do it or plugging directly with a big jack or um, whatever could work and then sending the data over a um, wired connection is like alright well he's using internet is he using a telephone line or is he using Wi-Fi or how is he getting that data out there and leaving some of that stuff to the watchers imagination would work a lot better than silly lines like well you know how do you know how do we know we're in his brain well he's hacking his brain and things like that or saying that okay well hey guys get your vcrs ready so silly things like that um don't need to be said just say get your recorders ready or make sure you guys record this and things like that and not say and things that's so all of that 
put together could make for a much better film than what we saw in Johnny Mnemonic. So, was it a fun film? Sure, fun and, and interesting enough. Was it be, was it more behind the times and ahead of the times? Definitely yes. Did it have cool elements like the street preacher and um, kind of that Tron-like interface when we were in Johnny Mnemonic's mind? Sure, that was cool enough. That kind of would still work when, if you're in a future where you are hacking into the brain and you don't want to have or you don't have access to the processing power of a major con um, conglomerate. Sure, that could work. Did the Matrix do it better? Yes, um, but there's ideas for a good film in this case so that's all there is for this particular review so if i was to recommend or not recommend this film um if you have not seen the matrix watch johnny mnemonic first and then watch the matrix if you have seen the matrix think of this as like the alpha test alpha version test case for what they're going to ultimately do in the matrix without the laser whip um and more of the whole kung fu and martial arts aspect of it so and bullet time and all of that um so the matrix is basically a properly hashed out version of johnny mnemonic whichever way you want to look at it but um it's not going to really waste that much of your time it's only like an hour and a half hour 36 and 36 minutes or something like that so not a whole lot of time um but the premise is good some it wasn't as hashed out as one would want it to be so that's kind of the downside there but it was entertaining enough there were parts that i liked parts that were kind of slow and dull and didn't really help the case akin the case for watching the movie so um there is that so um an argument can be made for this film in either direction but like i said for me it was entertaining enough to the point where you can see why how it in um, inspired the creation of the matrix and how and I don't want to say the acting was bad for any of the characters in this case, notably because you do have Keanu Reeves in the Matrix as well, and that worked a lot better than it did in this case. So, acting is, I mean, even in Johnny Mnemonic, Keanu Reeves' acting was good. I liked it. Dina Myers was good enough to be that bodyguard, um, pretending to have the shakes, trying to get make sure she gets paid and get Keanu to his destination. Ice T as the uh, leader of the low techs worked. Um, so overall, the elements worked, but it just didn't come together in the final version of the film. So like I said, as far as recommending it, if you have not seen The Matrix, watch Johnny Mnemonic first, and then watch The Matrix, so you're going from an okay film to a much better film. If you've seen The Matrix, then this is kind of like a retroactive filling in maybe how... Um, kind of like a pseudo backstory outside of The Matrix universe as far as um, the... Maybe the corporations finally ended up creating the AI via the form of that lady who originally founded Pharmacom and then it goes downhill and the resistance is born at some point. Then, assuming that you don't watch the Animatrix, which fills in all the backstory, but like I said, this is like an alpha test run case for the Matrix, so um, that's neither here nor there. What, and like I said, it's not a great film. Watch it if you want. And so it's kind of one of those things where it's hard for me to definitely recommend it. But if you're a fan of um, Keanu Reeves or Dina Meyer or Ice T or even Dolph Lundgren, then it's a film to watch. Not great, not bad, good enough for what they had at the time. And yes, they could have done better, but they didn't. So we have what we have. So that's all there is for this particular episode. Um, a much longer episode than I usually record, so thanks for sticking through it. Um, so if you have any feedback, questions, comments, thoughts, anything like that, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. You can um, support the show on Patreon at patreon.com slash PatelN01, where you can comment on the post there as well. Um, the website is headphonesnail.reviews for past episodes, subscription links, all support options aside from just Patreon. Um, and all of that good stuff but thanks for tuning into this particular review and until next time